Well, hello, everybody. Yes, my hair is fantastic. What's it to ya? Um, DNA has revealed the origin of this giant mystery gecko. Now, for those of you who have not seen this picture before, um, this is the only uh, specimen of this gecko ever discovered. I believe it came from the same place... I will read into it a little bit, but I believe it came from the same um, group of islands that the Leetees that do the, I uh, can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, a giant, mysterious gecko specimen, top and underside being shown, uh, thought to date to the 1830s, is now revealing its origin stories, thanks to DNA analysis. That's a thick gecko. That's a very thick gecko. Almost kind of looks like, a, I mean, with that head... Almost looks like, like a monkey-tailed skink. The big bulbous head. A lizard called De Delcourt's giant gecko has long been one of herpetology's biggest mysteries. Literally. Presumed extinct, the animal is by far the largest gecko known to have crawled on the earth. Measuring at least 600 millimeters. Or about two feet from snout to tail tip. The only example scientists have of the gecko, however, is a single museum specimen preserved in the 19th century with no notes as to its origin or identity. Now, DNA from the specimen reveals that the colossal lizard belongs to a group of New Caledonian diplodactylid geckos. Researchers um, report in June 19th in Scientific Reports. Geckos in this lineage repeatedly evolved into extreme body sizes as the archipelago uh, on the archipelago east of Australia. Compared to all other geckos, it's monstrous, says Matthew Heineke, um, an evolutionary biologist at the University of Michigan Dearborn. It happens to be a lineage where evolution of gigantism wasn't a one-off event. Oh my goodness. So, presumed extinct Delcourt's gecko was nearly one and a half times larger than uh, the largest living gecko species, Rachodactylus lycianus, which, you know, is a lychee, New Caledonia. That's where they come from. That's what I was, uh, crested geckos come from there. Um, all sorts of crazy stuff comes from there. My hair is coming from there. All sorts of cool, wacky stuff. Um, pre previously dubbed... Uh, Haptodactylus delcorti, uh, the gecko was renamed Gigarcanum delcorti in the new study, placing the animal in its own genus where, uh, whose name means giant mystery. It is about 50% longer and several times heavier than the largest living gecko today as a member of, a new of the New Caledonian group. Likely a nocturnal hunter, uh, delcorti was big enough to prey on birds and lizards including other geckos. Uh, its toe pads and long claws suggested it lived in the trees, uh, though it is probably the maximum size at which gecko could still adhere to vertical surfaces with its hallmark sticky grip, uh, Heineke says. The geckos came to scientists' attention in the 1980s work, but after collectors managed Alien Delcourt found the long-forgotten specimen at the Natural History Museum of Marsali in France, uh, stuffed rather than stored in spirits. The gecko supported a, a thick trunk, bulbous head, and brown skin with faint red bands. Herpetologist Aaron Bauer of Villanova uh, University in Pennsylvania was a graduate student when he arrived at the museum in 1983 to investigate the newly discovered specimen. So, this is what I love when I hear scientists say stuff like this, uh, like uh, that. Th this this gecko is probably as large as it could get without the gecko being able to adhere to sticky surfaces. Yet, honeybees um, are supposedly too fat to fly, and their their wings shouldn't be able to handle their body size. Yet they do. They obviously do. Um, you know. <coughs> At one point, the Quetzalcoatlus, Quetzalcoatlus, whatever you'd say, they were like, there was no, this thing had a hard time flying or, and, you know, and then like new evidence comes out and it's like, oh, this thing probably didn't have a hard time flying. It's just, it's always, we always think that something, there's no way this could happen. And then all of a sudden it does. 
So when they say, oh, scientists think that scientists can think all they want, they're proven wrong all the time. Now, that's the cool thing about science is that just because someone says something doesn't automatically mean it's true, but more and more evidence comes out to show that one thing is true or one thing is not true. You can make hypothesis all you want, and you can make those statements and say, I think this is what happens, but there's no way of knowing for sure. So this gecko was huge. Well, I seriously doubt it was, I, I'm sure that something would surprise us, and this thing could probably, like, could rip your face off with how sticky it was. Let me, let me guess, the little, little hairs on its feet that kind of grab on the stuff, it just rip your face off like Spider-Man. Uh, Bauer co-wrote the first description of the species in 1986, placing the reptile with a New Zealand gecko based on its physical characteristics. He also suggested that because of its coloring size, the gecko could be a Kiwakawai, a huge arboreal lizard from folklore of the indigenous Maori people. Uh, since then, techniques for retrieving and, um, and analyzing archival DNA have accelerated, allowing scientists to glean new information from degraded museum specimens, including extinct species such as the dodo and the thylacine also known as the Tasmanian Tiger. Um, Heineke, Bauer, and colleagues revisited the mysterious giant gecko, um, extracting and analyzing DNA from one of, the, one of its femurs. That's genetic material rewrote G. Delcordy's uh, origin story, showing that it is not even closely related to New Zealand's geckos. The diplodactylid geckos of New Caledonia and New Zealand are separated by about 45 million years of evolution. The team's findings turn things on their head as gecko geeks worldwide have long associated G. Del Corti with New Zealand, says Paul Dowdy, uh, a herpetologist at the Western Australian Museum in Perth. Uh, but this is the thing that these precious museum specimens with new technologies, they can give up new secrets. Exactly. So this thing was in a museum. I have no idea where it came from. They just knew that it was there since like the, probably the 1800s. And they're just like, well, it's probably related. No, you don't know anything. You don't know anything about it. You don't know where it came from until there was genetic analysis. You had no idea anything. So you can make guesses all you want. It doesn't mean that it's true. And this is showing that we, we a lot of science is just guesswork. And that doesn't sit well in people's minds, certain people, I should say. Um, some people want there to be like, hey, this is some proof because it's right here. Those people are also willing to believe plenty of things without proof, though. The ones that are the most critical, the ones that are like, there's no way, but a lot of them will believe things just based on what they were told as children. And that's that for them. Um, I was that way for a while. Now I'm not. Now I would like a little bit of proof. Uh, not everyone is surprised by the finding. Trevor Worthy, a paleontologist at Flinders University in Adelaide, Australia, previously, previously suggested that G. del Corti may have come from New Caledonia. Given its absence in New Zealand's extensive fossil record, you would think that such a big animal would have turned up and there is no sign of it, Worthy said. It's exciting to see the mystery cleared up. G. del Corti... Uh, still be nestled in the treetops of New Caledonia? It's unlikely, but possible, the researcher said. New geckos continue to be discovered on the island. I'd like to hold out at least a tiny glimmer of hope that there could be something out there, Bauer said. Well, of course there could be something out there. The crested gecko was thought to be extinct for like 100 years until it was discovered back in, I want to say, the 80s, and then it became a huge thing in the pet trade, and then all of a sudden they're everywhere. Like, that that stuff happens all the time. It would make sense that this is a New Caledonian gecko over a New Zealand gecko just because New Caledonia has a record for having these giant geckos just pop up kind of everywhere. That would be really cool, to be quite honest with you. I would much prefer that. And I think that um, there are plenty of things on that island we have no idea about, and there's plenty of gecko species we haven't discovered. I think we're foolish to think that this guy there was this was the only one ever found in history. Um, 
that's a cool picture from 1980. That same, that's the only specimen ever found of it. That thing's huge. That thing is like the size of a beaded lizard. But it's a gecko. Can you imagine a toke that size? A toke that size would rip your fingers off. That thing could do some serious damage. Geckos get mean when they get big. Even though they're soft-bodied, those things can pack a punch. You know, the size of that thing's head, that thing could probably bite your finger off without even thinking twice. That's awesome. Honestly. Let me know what you think down below. Do you think we're stupid for trying to believe that we know everything? Or do you think that or do you even think this thing is still out there? Do you think it's gone? I would like to hear your comments down below. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff stuff. If you want to be in my Discord, check out my Patreon. I will have that in the description down below. And I'll see you on the next one. Stay wild.